So we are in the second part where we are developing an HMM-based isolated word speech recognition. In the first part, we organized the WAV files in directories and started using Spock to train the HMM-based system. You can find Spock at this website. And now it has finished and you can see from the command line that it ran the front end for all the digits for the training sets and also for the test sets and after writing all the files it started training the HMMs first it wrote what's called a prototype sorry, a prototype HMM and then it started using the Baumwell algorithm for re-estimating HMMs using one Gaussian per mixture and then two up to five Gaussians per mixture. And after finishing the training procedure, it used the test data that's different from the training data to estimate the misclassification error. So using one Gaussian per mixture, there were 59 errors and the error rate was around 5%. And if you look at five Gaussians per mixture, then the number of errors got reduced to five, and the error rate is around 0.4%. And this finishes the testing procedure. So Spock can also uh, organize the results. Let's say you have many simulations, all of them are organized using the same output root directory. I mean, all of them are organized uh, subdirectories of this root directory. And then you can go results and you can choose this directory and the summary file. And when you ask for generating a summary, it goes over all the subdirectories and writes one file that can be imported to, for example, Excel or similar softwares because this gives you all the information for the different front ends that you have tested, etc. And also, after generating these CMF files, that you can visualize what's called confusion matrix, for example. Here I'm going to reset the default data and choose, uh, for example, I'm browsing, looking for this guy. I want to see this file here, the CMF, the confusion file, is going to show me uh, where there were errors. So if you look here, you can see the errors this is this is what's spoken and this is the recognized or the other way around I don't remember but basically let's assume 1 8 was misrecognized as 6 1 4 as 8 but let me show you uh, numbers instead of circles so I'm trying to find the number five oh here. So there were okay here. Okay. So I, I need to to remember how this interface is designed. But ba basically, you can use many things like uh, using, for example, circles and numbers, and using smaller circles, and this kind of thing helps you to find where the errors occurred. Oh, here you find one, two, three, four, five. The five errors that were described here. So basically, after you have finished this, you can also create a GIF image if you want, for example, uh, errors dot GIF, and then create the file. And some other options that you have 
I'm just going to browse the outputs directory. So this is an indication of the front ends, and this is for the HMMs. And there are, for example, if you go to this file, the log of the HMM estimation, you can see that bound welch was applied to the digits, I mean to the waveform files corresponding to the digit 8. And at the first iteration, this is the log probability per frame. And then this is the improvement you get, the convergence means the improvement. And then you see that in the last iterations, you were getting a smaller convergence. And this is useful to see what's going on for all the training numbers. So you can see if the training is improving, for example, the probability this number is smaller than this number. So everything seems okay. But it seems that they have reached 20 iterations. So maybe you want to increase the number of maximum iterations that's a parameter in the configuration files. And if you go inside the test directory, you can find the errors. I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to change the extension to, yes, we have a kid. And here you have some extra information, meaning that 1.8 was misrecognized as 6, 1.4 as O, and so on. And this is the file where the error happened. So it's, it's useful to, to identify where the errors happened. And I believe that this guy, I don't remember now, but yes, this is some sort of uh, uh, okay, I don't. So the this is as I was saying the description of each error, and this guy here tells you that the words uh, number seven. So it doesn't mean don't confuse with the digit seven, because as you saw the the words, the first words, the one that got the index zero, was the uh, digit eight. But basically, this is the word number seven. Okay, and then these guys up to here tells you how the frames were associated to states. For example, this means that the first state consumed 41 frames, the second state 6 frames, the third 24, and then only one frame was associated to the state number 4. And then you can see that it ends... Okay. It, you can see that five states are emitting states because we chose seven states per HMM. So two no emitting and five emitting states. And basically, if you go to the other option, the number, the digits, uh, the second was uh, the digit eight. So it got, so this guy probably is digit six. And because I can see from here, right? So the guy said eight, but the system recognized as six. And the second uh, uh, place, or the second best option the decoder uh, had was the correct digit, the digit six. And the way the frames were organized as states, you can see, follows a pattern that goes up to here. And if you sum, 18 with 31, it should give the same number as if you start summing 41 plus 6 and so on. Basically the number of frames that that wave file has.